This is Arts Weekly. Arts Weekly is produced in cooperation with the College of Visual and Performing Arts at IPFW, offering degrees in fine arts, music, theater, and visual communication and design. Welcome to Arts Weekly. I'm John O'Connell, Dean of the IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts. In the second half of the show, we'll hear all about this year's Three Rivers Festival from Jack Hammer and Ashley Steenman. But first, I'm pleased to welcome Cynthia smith wartzog from the Pulse Opera House in Warren, Indiana. Their production of Pirates of Penzance opens July 18th and promises to be a rollicking Gilbert and Sullivan good time. Welcome, Cynthia, to Arts Weekly, and thank you for joining me. Thank you. Glad I to have be a here. little bit of a soft spot for this show in my heart okay. because I almost lost my left eye as a young <laughs> professional actor in a production of Pirates of Penzance. The Swords? The Swords. The Swords. Yes. We've been doing a bit of Swords. Sword play I'll ourselves. bet you have. You've got to dance and sing and mm. sword fight at the same right. time. And right. I was in a production in Minnesota and it was opening night and that sword came off of the other one and right into my eye. Oh my and gosh. ten minutes later I was in the Fargo, North Dakota emergency room <laughs> with a bleeding eye and thinking I'd lost everything but I hadn't. So the only good mm -hmm. thing about that story mm -hmm. is that the next night in Pirates of Penzance mm -hmm. I got to wear an official eye patch because I really did have an injury. You know, it's not every show you can wear an eye patch. It's not. It's so not. So exactly. you can get by with that. I got by with it. Well, welcome. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to meet you. Nice. Um, how long have you been with the Pulse Opera House? Well, this would be our 28th season, so 28 years. It's been a, a long haul. <laughs> are you, so you're one of the founding, you are I the am, I am. Founding partner or founder mm -hmm. of the Pulse Opera House? My husband and I have been doing this um, over the course of, of all these years. Um, I, I had done my research for my master's thesis on opera houses and specifically on the Pulse Opera House. And so from that, we decided to try a restoration. Well, your educational background is in theater. Mm -hmm. You have a degree uh, from, I'm proud to say, IPFW. IPFW, theater department. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. And um, what master's degree were you studying when it you It was were? theater, and it was down at IU, okay. Bloomington. Okay, great. And for your thesis, you decided to just look at all the... Just that one or well, several Well, I them? started looking at, I wanted to do a, a broad-based research on opera houses in Indiana and found that there was enough material on just the Pulse Opera House. Um, they had three different newspapers during the late 1800s, and a woman that I found out was writing amazing stories about everything that she saw and witnessed and experienced at the theater. And so it was, it was the basis for, for all of the information. For your thesis mm -hmm. report. Right. Um, and what brought you to Warren to begin with then? Well, um, my, my family's from Warren, oh, Indiana, okay. and so I had known about this opera house since I was a little girl. I heard all these stories from my grandfather about, about William Jennings Bryan speaking there and Buffalo Bill and all the different things, and it just kind of lit my imagination. I did guess. you rescue it? We did. You did. We did. I think, it, I think a lot mm -hmm. of people in the country have had to sort of you know, uh, rescue mm -hmm. theaters, and re we did that here at our own embassy theater, mm -hmm. the same sort of thing. So you had to rescue it from almost dilapidation and... It was. There was no electricity up there when we mm -hmm. started. And actually, the embassy, when they made renovations, they donated different things to the opera house. So we have lights. In fact, at one point, they called and wanted to know if we wanted their light board. Well, we got there, and their light board was bigger than our whole stage. <laughs> I'm sure so it was, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely not, but we do have some of the footlights and some of the things from the embassy. They've been very generous to us. When you say opera house, what makes it different than a theater house? Well, the, the term opera house was a term used at the turn of the century because they wanted, uh, theater didn't have a very good reputation. Yeah, I can and imagine. And so they wanted to make it a little more highbrow, sure. so they would call it opera. Operas were very rarely done okay. in, in opera houses. Was it, was it, is it similar to a vaudevillian house, if you will? Uh, they, they would. The shows would come in and they'd stay a week. They would do two shows a day, 35 cents each to come and see it. Um, they, but there were a variety of things. Opera was done, Shakespeare. Um, th there were things called, shows called things like town topics, which would be, we would think of them as improv these mm. days, where they would come and they'd find out what was going on in town and they would just discuss it and do 
skits and sketches. Spoof kinda. it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, spoof yeah. it. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Is it a proscenium stage? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It was an old gaslight stage. We do have uh, poles that run down the center of the of the theater, so we do have. It's very that's very a challenge. Authentic. It's it's challenging. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How big a, a house is it? Seats two hundred. Oh, that's a nice mm -hmm. size for a, a smaller community in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now. Uh, my research tells me it's not on the main floor, though. No, it's an upstairs theater. And why is that? Because around the turn of the century, people would, would build theaters upstairs so that they could have their businesses down below. In fact, Captain, it was a Civil War captain, Captain Silas Pulse, that built the Opera House. And in the, they called them vanity books, but they were bios that people would put out. He never even mentioned that he had a, a theater. It was all about his businesses and about his, his, his service in the military and all that. Nothing about the theater. Nothing that upstairs. was happening upstairs. Nothing that was happening He upstairs. was more interested in the business that was happening downstairs. And now his name lives on because of the theater. Right, but. right. What do you have on the main floor then? Um, well, we have our lobbies down on the main floor, restrooms, all of that. Uh -huh. um, and you do a full season? We do a full season. We do five shows a year. It begins in September as your season? I think uh, we're going to well, talk actually, about your season. Well, actually, we have started doing our seasons. We start in January because we started a tradition when we first got started of having a New Year's Eve party oh. and announcing the next season at the stroke of midnight oh. so that everybody involved could hear at the same time. It was before Facebook and before social yeah. media. <laughs> uh, well, that's a nice tradition. So, so you'd have a party on uh, New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. and everyone would wait for the stroke of midnight, and they'd and get to get just the big news about mm -hmm. what's coming up in the season. That's, that's right. great. We've done it all these years. Well, we're here to talk a little bit mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the Pirates of Penzance, uh, mm -hmm. a show that I just think is one of the most delightful shows to be in, uh, and mm -hmm. a great show for an audience. Mm -hmm. What makes you pick a Gilbert and Sullivan? Because it's an operetta. It is an operetta, and we we did this. It's one we did 18 years ago, and we had so much fun when we did it the first mm -hmm. time. We decided to. Try try it again, but I was wondering how it would play because it is 18 years later and I didn't know, and it's been interesting because our teenagers coming in all said they'd never been in an opera before and they were, they were put off by it. Now they absolutely love it mm -hmm. because it is the most fun music in the world mm -hmm. to sing mm -hmm. and it is the most joyful show I can think of that I think we've ever done and it is as much fun now as it was when we did it the first time. It feels fresh and I'm not sure why but it just does. I think people are sort of mistaken with the idea that an operetta is going to be like an opera. It's going to be mm -hmm. sort of staid and long and hard mm -hmm. to follow. And operettas, specifically Gilbert and Sullivan, they really wanted to mix the world of musical theater uh -huh. and opera so that we could have a story that's told through music and verse mm -hmm. um, and still be a rollicking good time because it's... And, and these yeah. characters are bigger than life. They are. I mean, yeah. and the just the patter, the, the, the kids that are in the show are finding that they can't get these songs out of their heads. They come in singing them, they right. leave, you wake up in the morning and you've got, you know, um, pieces of songs going through your head. It's it's just incredible music. Is is Major General in that? Yes, yes. that's Major So that's General. what you're talking about, Patter. It's that song, mm -hmm. I am the Major General, da 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 Faster the better. <laughs> Faster you can do it, the better off you mm -hmm. are. And who is playing that role? Um, Ralph Tuttle, he's from Fort Wayne, and he's been coming in. And he's he's got it. The he first, does have it? Yes, he did. The first night he got all the way through it, I mean, there was general um, merriment going Absolutely on everywhere. Absolutely, applause. Because it really is. And I told him, I said, you know, anybody ever playing the Major General is going through exactly what you're going uh, oh. through over the, yeah. <laughs> over the ages because it's hard. Absolutely. Uh, when I did it uh, professionally, I remember there mm. would be nights when the major would come off and go, oh, I started verse three in the middle of verse two, but the conductor always stayed with him. He always mm -hmm. knew where he was and he always mm -hmm. got back in track because it's a difficult song. It's like tap dancing. You miss one little beat and it's hard to get back it on. Is. Yeah, it's absolutely. almost impossible. Right. So. Well, they were incredible musicians, mm -hmm. Gilbert and Sullivan, oh, and they, they write music that is just so mm -hmm. beautiful and so wonderful and great fun. How big is the cast? Um, the cast is about 31. Mm. Um, pretty good sized cast for us for a very small stage. Yeah. We have stage space, we have no off stage space, so it always surprises me during tech week when I walk back and I see people like slammed up against the wall. But They don't mind. No, they don't mind. They, don't mind. they have to get along. It's, yeah, it's they a close-knit group. I know. Actors, are you kidding? Once the, sh once the show's on, they don't really care about what's happened back there. Yeah. Now, are these all volunteers ac volunteer actors? Mm -hmm, they it's are. A, it's a community it's theater? It's a community theater. Mm -hmm. And it, it's more like a regional community theater because we are located in a small town. Um, our people come in from all over, so I think we end up getting people who are really serious about what they want to do right. because they have to make that commitment to yeah. be there. I would imagine the title attracts people. 
You know, you've got to pick does. titles that, that get people to come to, you know, that do a, mm -hmm. have a regional influence. Yeah. Th that is so true. And, you know, I, I hate to admit it, but when I'm looking for shows, I do look at just what it's called. If it's a new show, I have to make sure it sounds interesting right. because it's really hard to get people out for new stuff. Or not a large cast. Uh, yeah. If it's or, a new show, you can look around yeah. for local actors that you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So what are the dates of Pirates of Penzance? It opens July 18th and it runs through August 9th. And then we run Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and people can still get tickets. They can. Now, are you a performer? I used to be. I don't do so much anymore. I'm more back behind the scenes. But back at my days at Purdue Indiana Theater, I was. You were, and yeah. Civic and Arena and First Prez, all of those. Mm -hmm. But you're just a director I'm mainly? A director no, I should now. Say, I'm a director. Did yeah, you hear me I'm, just say I'm just the director? I heard that. I, yeah, I know I that's, uh, I'm never going to get hired again as a director, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, how do people audition at the Pulse Opera? Um, they're open auditions. They are. And um, you know, for a musical, they just have to bring a song, and a, a short song, right. brief, exactly. <laughs> that shows off your voice. Yeah. And uh, then we do cold readings. And how do people find out about auditions? Do you have a mailing list? Or we do have a mailing list, uh -huh. but we also have a website, and we're also on Facebook. Anymore, it seems like most of our stuff is on Facebook, the mo more up-to-date stuff, because it's it's updated daily. Right, and people can get to it right and away. And they, they can converse with us, too, and ask questions. Yeah. And and do you do a, a lot of musicals, or is it just We do usually one or two a year, mm -hmm. and then plays. And then we've gotten into a lot of um, youth-related um, theater, because we've been working with the schools. Mm -hmm. So we'll do, we do a lot of Broadway juniors, and then we bring um, classes in, and we'll bring in eight, 800 or so local students to come and see a show. Wow, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm pleased about that because it should be the mission of every theater in America to be introducing our young people to the theater. They're just yeah. too detached from our art form. I and agree, I, and I think it's even more important nowadays because these kids are so tuned in to technology. Exactly. And I think the most interesting question, we had it come up last year, and it's come up every school show this year. Uh, it's, I, I don't even know how to read it, but the, the younger ones, first and second graders, will come up and ask the actors if they're real. Really? And at first I thought they were asking, are you really like Ramona Quimby? Are you right. really, you know, Baloo the bear? But I realized they're asking if they're real because they're so used to watching things on a screen. Right. And they're so used to watching and getting their entertainment that way that watching it on stage was confusing. Right. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, And thank too. you for joining me on Arts Weekly. I look forward to Pirates of Penzance, one of um, my favorite <laughs> all-time plays. As an audience and a performer, I didn't lose my eye. Well, that's a good that thing. That is a good thing. That is a good thing. Thank you for joining Thank me. You. Take this minute to uh, view what's coming up on our performance calendar, and I'll be right back with Jack Hammer and Ashley Steenman to hear all about the Three Rivers Festival starting in July. Who doesn't love the Three Rivers Festival? From the opening parade and the art in the park and junk food alley and the raft race, there's something for everyone. I'm pleased to welcome Jack Hammer and Ashley Steenman to Arts Weekly, and I can't wait to hear what's planned for this summer's festival. Welcome to Arts Weekly, and thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having us thank here. You. Isn't this like the big event of Fort Wayne in the summer? It's, I mean, it's right in the middle. For 46 years, we have been really uh, beating that drum of civic pride here for the city of Fort Wayne, and it is the biggest thing that happens. We have the biggest traffic tie-up on fireworks night. Right. We have more food vendors. We have more fun, more music, more events than any other festival in the city. I think in state. 
I well, would say. I mean, it really is. I, I've lived in a few different states, and when I came here and saw Three Rivers Festival, it's just it, the organization it takes to put that all together. Jack, you are the executive director. I'm the executive director, so yes. So you're sort of responsible for that huge organizational pattern and tool and, and, and journey, right? Well, we start with a board of directors, which Ashley is part of the board of directors. Okay, so and how uh, many are on the board of directors? 16. 16, okay. Seems like 100. I'm just <laughs> 16, yeah, seems 16. Like yeah. Yes, exactly. Except on the first day of the festival, it seems like two because the rest of them are gone. Yeah, I yeah. want to tell you what, it is, uh, it's through 400 plus volunteers right. and a board of directors that we're able to get this done. A lot of times I get to take the accolades right. for that, but I turn around and always remind folks of all the hard work that goes in. And it's, it's people in every profession that take time out to help mm -hmm. during the summer for the Three Rivers mm -hmm. Festival. Yeah, I think across the board you can talk to somebody in town and they have at some point volunteered or done something for the festival to some capacity. Ashley, how long have you been on the board or been involved with the festival? Uh, this is actually my first year on the board of directors and also that would be my first year as the chair for Art in the Park. Well, congratulations on your first year. <laughs> Thank you. Jack, congratulations. You've got a newcomer <laughs> that can just work her to death and oh, yeah, get yeah. Her, break her right in. <laughs> we get him there. We you want to put him to work really quick. Right yeah. in, right She's away. doing a fantastic yeah. job for us. I would say Art in the Park is one of the big events, yeah? It surely is. It's the oldest running art festival in the area. Yeah. And uh, I think we'll see in between 20 and 30,000 people over the two days. Mm -hmm. And anybody that goes down and enjoys the parade on the 12th knows that uh, a nice stop at the uh, Art in the Park to look around at everything mm -hmm. is perfect before you hit Junk Food Alley. Right. And Art in the Park, uh, Ashley, tell our viewers where Art in the Park is located. Art in the Park is located in Fryman Square and along Main Street right. in downtown Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. So beautiful park setting, um, great location in front of Arts United Center as well as the Fort Wayne Museum of Art. How many vendors do you expect this year, Ashley? Well, this year we'll have, about, se we'll have about 75 artists as part of our juried fine art show. And there'll be about 81 um, addition, you know, 81 booths in total, some other performances, some other art related vendors that will be there. Um, we will also have two of our local galleries, which we're really excited to have this year. It's kind of a new thing mm -hmm. um, with Artworks Galleria as well as Wunderkammer. Um, so they'll oh, be- Oh, that Wunderkammer. He just got to be in everything, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, Dan, yeah. Dan, we, we just, if you give Dan Schwartz a slight door, he is in it. Yeah. He, he Usually takes I'm it. pushing my way in with Dan. Uh, yeah, yes, exactly, the two of you, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he's well, been a great mentor for this, for planning this uh, year's Art in the Park, too. So. I don't know if the guy sleeps, quite frankly. <laughs> um, so I want to go back a second because you talked about that that there's two sort of divisions in the art fair, that you actually have a juried section. Mm -hmm. Is that fairly new? Or have you always had a juried We've section? We've always had a juried art You show. have? Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess I didn't know that. I thought that, that um, <coughs> there was just a mix of crafts and art, but you, you've always had a juried art section. Oh, that's well, terrific. I've learned something very important in my tenure. Do not get an artist and a crafter confused. Oh, well, that's why I asked the question, because I, when I, I actually was involved in the festival as a presenter in the art festival, and, and we were categorized as a craftsman and we were supposed to be in the fine art which I didn't know oh, that jury. hurt that it, hurt it didn't hurt me I didn't you know I stood under a sweaty tent and sold things so I didn't really care so I'm really happy to hear that that's terrific and are they separated now in where they're located yeah that's correct so there used to be crafters market which was on the uh, north side of Fryman okay. Square in that back parking lot we moved that over to Headwaters West this year so that will have its own special place um, so all the artists they actually got a little bit of room to expand into the back area um, and then in the back section there too along in that parking lot we added a performance tent so we'll have some live acts some acoustic uh, artists and some dance performance things like that that's wonderful that's yeah. I was just noticing last night that in my garden one of my Three Rivers Festival you know garden purchases has burst its bubble so oh. I know exactly what tent to go to, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I know yeah. exactly what vendor I'm going to have that fixed in a couple of weeks. They yeah. will be back. You yeah. know, we find that there's three and four generations of families that have done things at the Three Rivers Festival, mm -hmm. and I'm lucky enough to have sat there and watched my grandfather and father march in that parade and be part of it myself and then with the media for years, and everybody's got a story. When my wife and myself got married on July 14th, knowing all of our friends would be in town for the Three Rivers Festival, uh, I would have no idea that on this year, our 30th anniversary, I will see her long enough to uh, share an ice cream cone and a kiss. Well, that's congratulations to both of you. Thank you. That's but there's great. There's a lot of stories. Well, attached. I have a story too because my first Three Rivers Festival was my birthday, July 16th, which happened to be the night of the bed race. 
and my brother is the uh, the vi the president of the Visitors and Convention Bureau, mm -hmm. Dan O'Connell, and they always I have a bed in. That. So he said, for your birthday, you can ride in the bed. I said, terrific. And boy, I just I yelled at those guys all the way down Main <laughs> Street. Come on, pick it up. Mm -hmm. I want to win. Yeah, so that was a good birthday present for me. I want to tell you what, the, the bed race is one of those heritage events yep. that we have, and people can join us on Wednesday down on Main Street. And uh, people, it's amazing because there'll be three, 4,000 people packed on the street Absolutely. right there for the bed race. Right. And we're still taking uh, applicants on that, you know, putting a bed together. I've seen beds crafted out of aluminum, very, very intricate with 10 speed wheels. And I've also seen, well, I've seen one that didn't even make it out of the starting <laughs> gate. And that was. That was the Republican Party made one, and it was wood, and I don't think it had been tested <laughs> real well. Bad. But uh, everybody comes down for that. Yeah, it, I was surprised at the turnout. It was huge. Now that's six o'clock on Wednesday night. Is that the time? Or yes, what, sir. It is six o'clock. That's what I thought. Right. And you do it in heats. Yes. So it runs for a while. So bring a chair, sit down, bring something cold to drink because it's going to go on for a little while. The race, if I'm not. Yeah, the, the race takes uh, fully almost about two hours to yeah. happen, but it's a lot of fun because the beds are a lot of fun. And this year, for the first time, instead of having to be entered into the race for speed, you can come out and bring a bed that you know is not going to make it with speed, but you can make it as fancy as you want. Oh. And so we're going to judge a bed also that way. So if it can make it the parade round, and it can sit there and look really good with its disco ball or whatever Absolutely. it might be. Great you can also be judged a winner. Terrific. That's fantastic. So let's kind of go through the week, if you would, just so our viewers have an idea. of. We start with the parade. And what's the date of that start? The parade is on the 12th, on Saturday morning. But we actually start the night before this oh. year. On Friday the 11th, we're going to open up with a cheap trick that night. We have a NASA display coming in that's going to house a moon rock and a lot of other great hands-on type activities. Friday night, the Colts are coming. The Colts Fan Fest is going to be there. So I think a, a few years ago, we decided we'd try to do some things on Friday, and nobody told me that, so I tried to put everything on Friday. <laughs> and uh, so, But the parade is really the, the kickoff that most people see. Right, right. And that has been going on. Uh, this is our 46th year. Right, and it's a very successful parade, I think. It'll be about two, two hours long yeah, and thousands, yeah. uh, in between 40 and 60,000 people watching. Right. And that's a lot of people. That's terrific. And then what happens during that weekend as well? Uh, during that weekend, that day on Saturday, we have the Under the Sun Tour, and that's Smash Mouth, Sugar Ray, Blues Traveler, and Uncle Cracker. They're going to all be there on Saturday night. Sunday is a Where is that venue? That place is going to be the Hanning and Bean Plaza, which is in Headwaters East, the large covered plaza sure. after you go by the MLK. Right. That's where that's going to be. That's where we do all of our big concerts, mm -hmm. kind of acts as a hub. And so we got great music all week long, but starting on, so Sunday, uh, a great band for King and Country is going to be there. Monday night, we're going to do the Waiter Waitress Olympics inside a plaza. And then we're going to have music. On Tuesday night, that's our $2 day. So there's $2 treats in Junk Food Alley. And it, by the way, it is Junk Food oh, Alley. I love Junk Food Just Alley. Just because somebody walked through there with a piece of lettuce, we were not going to change the name. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it's right beside Junk Food right there. So uh, music all week long. Uh, on $2 Tuesday, it's $2 to get into Plaza, $2 drinks, things like that. Mm -hmm. Wednesday is Family Fun Day, and we have the Atomic Sharks, and the Jug Huffers are going to be there. And on Thursday, a big country show where we have American Young, Brothers Osborne, Hubie Ashcraft in the drive, and also Chuck Wicks is going to come by and pay us a visit. Friday night, probably one of the best shows that we have ever brought. We're bringing back again, and it's a Michael Jackson tribute called Who's Bad? I heard about the last time you did it that. It is fantastic. Uh -huh. They're going to be with us and some guys that used to work for Motown that now tour under the name of Touch. Mm -hmm. And that night, you're going to know every word to every song. Wow. And then Saturday night for the fireworks, there's always great music throughout the day. Our friends at Sweetwater and What's Up are helping us with a regional music showcase. Mm -hmm. During that, there'll also be a brew tasting, a beer tasting, the brew review. And then that night, well, we're going to drag just about every firework we can find in the county up to the top of One Summit Square, and we're going to light them off. What a week. I just want to point out 
Jack doesn't have any notes in front of him. Did you realize <laughs> that, actually? <laughs> Not one note. He's got band names. He's got dates. Congratulations. They got the right guy in the right job, don't they? Yeah. He has to keep that stuff memorized. He, yeah. he just has it right there. It's fantastic. Someplace somebody's going, he never called me back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, how do people get information uh, if they want to um, get a detailed list of what's happening? Is there a website or a Yes, our web Yeah, we finally went with a website. Our okay. website is threeriversfestival.org. And we just have a brand new website up, in fact, okay. and you can get all the information there. But, you know, the one thing that people have been getting their information with for years is the guide. Right. And they can find the guide. It's either ended up in 73,000 mailboxes in Fort Wayne, and you're also going to find it at Walls, uh, at Walls, at Halls, excuse Walgreens. I can I can combine yeah, all yeah. those into Walgreens. And uh, you're also going to find it in What's Up Magazine. Great. Well, thank you both for being here. I'm very excited about the festival this year. And Jack, it's amazing what you can get done in a year. Thank you. Congratulations. With a lot of help from my friends. Welcome thank to you. your first year as on you. the board. I'm John O'Connell, Dean of the IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts. Tune in to the next Arts Weekly when we'll meet Melissa Skinner to hear all about this year's Burn Swiss Days running July 24th to 26th. Then local sculptor Carrie Schaefer stops by to talk about his work as a classically trained stone carver. For up-to-the-minute arts updates, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And be sure to join us here Thursday evenings at 7.30 on PBS 39. Thanks for watching Arts Weekly.